Good afternoon, everyone. Glenn here over at Pine Line Farm. We are in the sheep coverall and we are at it again for lambing season. So this girl kicked things off for us on Monday and she had a set of triplets and then uh, went a few days and then yesterday we had this set of twins, this little single and another set of twins. So we're doing pretty good. I knew when we turned the rams out in the fall, don't mind that squeaking door that's chained back there, it's creaking in the wind. I knew when we turned the lambs out, rams out I should say, um, it was going to be a slow start to the year. I uh, didn't see a lot of activity right away and I feel like it's going to be a bit of a dragged out year for lambing. Last year we were all lambed in two weeks. Um, with the exception of some Shetland ewes that we had brought in from my father's flock. Uh, they went about two weeks and then they all lambed within a, about 10 days of each other. So it was like we had two lambing seasons, um, even though they were all exposed to the same rams at the same time. This is a little ewe lamb that I almost shipped to the sale barn in the fall because she was tiny and I didn't think she would breed. She's a little bug-eyed, <laughs> a little bit on the wild side, but she has a healthy little ewe lamb there she's looking after, so she gets to stay. Um, we put the ewes in these lambing pens um, for about 24 hours. So I just set this pen up today with these green gates. Uh, tomorrow I'll take these blue gates down and I'll continue to set them up over there on that side as more sheep lamb. And then as more sheep lamb and come out of those pens, it will have set up there. They will come into this pen, and as this pen becomes crowded, I'll add more of these green gates um, and extend it out to the end of the coverall. And then eventually I just go right across the yard, divide the whole yard in half, and we have everything that has lambed on one side and everything that hasn't lambed on the other side. And at the end of the lambing, um, we will either hang on to everything that was open, turn them out to pasture and get them a little bit fat before we butcher them, or they will just go directly on the truck um, right out of here. And that's kind of the way we do it. Um, last year, 25 ewes, I believe, gave us 52 lambs. And we lost two or three that were stillborns from sets of triplets. And then uh, I think out of those 50, uh, almost 50 live lambs, there was one that I held up to the mother to help it to nurse. And that was it. Um, these are pretty easy keeping sheep. We don't ear tag anymore. We don't tail dock. We stopped tail docking. Uh, 2020 was the last, uh, the first year that we didn't tail dock. I think we're down to about three old ewes in this flock now that uh, don't have tails. This is one of them. Uh, and she was just a yearling that year. So she's just, uh, she's probably a 2019 model. And we don't tag anymore because as you can see here, this ewe, she ripped tag out. Um, the whole flock was tagged at one point and you'll see hardly any tags in ewes anymore. They just tear them out. So we have a pretty simple system because we keep a line bred flock. We retain back all of our own ram lambs. Um, our system is very, very simple. A ewe lambs, she comes in here. And if I don't have to deal with her and she's had twins or triplets, all is good. If it's a single, ram or you i put an ear notch in the lamb and that lamb is automatically butchered in the fall and if it's a you that wasn't a good you and for whatever reason had a sloppy udder did something wrong didn't want to look after her lambs etc etc she also gets near notch and then she's gone at shearing time when we shear um, if we haven't called the open ewes, then at shearing time, anything that's dry just gets put on a truck and gets sent to slaughter. And 
Um, I check all their teeth when they're turned upside down at shearing time. And um, if they're starting to wear their teeth out and their teeth are starting to really get in bad shape, then I put an ear notch in them. So then fall time, anything that had an ear notch, it means that it's, you know, has a bad udder or bad temperament or whatever. And then it goes and um, use that like this little ewe lamb here she's just a yearling she only had one lamb i'll let that slide any of these mature ewes that only have one lamb um, they will get a notch in their right ear so first time lambs they they'll still have a clean clean ear second time i put a notch in the right ear the next year if that ewe has a single lamb that means that's two years in a row of having single lambs i put a notch in her left ear right ear means it's all right she can stick around another year left ear means get out so lambs and ewes that end up with an ear notch and left ear they get out that system works really 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 well because come fall time when i'm picking out lambs put on the truck there's a notch in the left ear and I've forgotten why it's there. So I just automatically put them on the truck. Back when I was keeping notes, it's pretty easy to get looking at lambs in the fall and say, well, that's a really good looking new lamb or a really good looking ram. And you look at the notes and you say, oh, well, that wasn't that big of a deal. It's easy to forget about it when you're not at lambing time. And then you make an excuse and you keep that. Um, but we don't do that with the ear notches. With the ear notches, it takes our heart out of it. Um, it's just a decision. There's a notch in the ear, they go. So pretty easy keepers of this group of ewes. Um, that second ewe, her bag was a little sloppy and I thought there was no way the lambs were gonna get on it and I was gonna have to um, hold the lambs up and get them on her. And uh, then at the same time, this other ewe here, I'd seen her lamb and I went home for lunch. I came back and one of the lambs had actually got in behind that door that's so squeaky. Um, and when I took it out, she did not want that lamb uh, because she'd lost track of it. Uh, normally that would be disastrous. So both this you and this you here, I thought I was gonna have problems with, but I put them in the lambing pens and I walked away and that's 24 hours now that lamb's up and sucking that udder being a little bit sloppy and the teats being in a funny spot lamb still got on lamb still did their thing this you even though she didn't really want that lamb after a while she took it and um, everything's great so that's what easy keeping sheep are all about um, the only thing we'll do with these after they go to the pasture is we shear them. Um, I don't trim feet, I don't deworm. They just eat hay, they're eating some pretty good hay. Here's some really nice third cut that they're eating. The only problem we really had last year was we had a bunch of triplets and we left them on the mothers. And we did end up with some rather poor lambs in the fall that didn't grow enough. So the decision was there any bottle fed lambs that we get, we sell to a neighbor. I haven't had any bottle fed lambs to sell now in two years, um, but she takes them and raises them. But how do you decide which triplet to sell to the neighbor when they're all this healthy? But yet I know come fall, they'll be kind of poor. So we don't lamb on grass. If I get that ewe out on good green grass, she would milk enough for these lambs. And as those lambs are able to start nibbling that little bit of grass, they would start eating and they would do good. The problem is we won't have grass for probably about five, maybe even six weeks. This year might be early. We might get them on some green grass in about four weeks. By then, those lambs will have had a setback. And now we are grass fed and we market grass fed lamb. We don't really want to put those lambs on a creep feeder. So I think our decision this year is 
um, to start feeding these lactating ewes a pound of oats and barley a day. I have a wagon full of it that we're going through really slowly for the chickens. Um, if the ewe with triplets will benefit from it, surely these ewes feeding twins will also benefit from it. We don't like feeding grain, but feeding oats and barley is far different than feeding a high commercial lamb pellet, highly processed lamb pellet, uh, or even feeding corn and soy. Um, oats and barley are, they're organic oats and barley at that. Um, Decent enough energy, not stupidly high protein, not high in estrogens. Uh, give them all a pound for the next month as they lamb. So, you know, a pound a day by, there's only 40 ewes out there. By the end of lambing season, we'll be up to 40 pounds a day. That's about a five gallon bucket, maybe a little bit more of grain. That's not gonna break the bank and I don't think it's going to hurt these ewes and then they'll be out on grass. So even if we do butcher these ewes eventually and they go back into our uh, retail store, those ewes are going to be on grass for at least six months before they ever get butchered. And actually they'd be on forage for a year because we won't really butcher them unless they're open or maybe their teeth are bad. So they'd they would be off grain for six months to a year before we butcher them. And even then, the grain they do get is going to be pretty minimal in their diet. But we're going to do it in an attempt to um, help these moms of triplets. Likes of that little ewe lamb over there feeding a single. She still has a lot of growing to do. It'll benefit her. These moms of twins, I'm sure it's not going to hurt them. Um... So I think I'm just going to give it to them all as opposed to just trying to separate out these triplets and really push the grain to them. Um, we try not to treat anything as an individual on this farm, but try to treat them as a flock or a herd. Um, so it, that cuts down on the workload, but it also helps with just so many other factors when you don't have to start doing extra chores and, and treating things as individuals. Um, they kind of have to do their thing or, or leave. But the ones that do their thing, they really do their thing. So anyway, I will give you a few more updates as we go along. But these are our little commercial sheep. They have quite a bit of a clun forest look to them. Um, maybe not that one, but... For the most part, uh, they do, but we don't really know what's in them. These were just a line bred flock for many years before my wife got them, and then we've just continued to line breed them, and uh, they've been doing pretty good for us. Anyway, if you have any questions, just uh, leave a note in the comments, and I will try to answer them.